Today, I'm chatting with Ben from Inevitable. He said I had to say it like that. Hopefully that was okay. Was that, was that okay? Perfect. Great. So today's episode, we're going to be talking about AI. I went to the source. I went to the man, the very person I know who builds AI himself, because I thought you guys deserve to get the biggest news on AI that I can possibly find. And that just happened to be someone who was absolutely perfect. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Things might get scary. Things might get spooky. This was supposed to be a 40 minute episode we recorded. We recorded for two hours and 48 minutes. So this may come out as two to three episodes. We'll see how it goes. I hope you enjoy this episode. Let me know what you think. Basically, I want you to scare me in my listeners, <laughs> which is what you said last time we spoke. You said I could scare you. We okay. may get into some scary things. Sure. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about really is what would you say is the most exciting things that you're seeing in the past like five to 10 years in, in AI developing at the moment? The boring answer is to talk about large language models and chat GPT and the, the various things that, that are coming out of that. The excite, I guess if there is an exciting part about that, it was the the fact that, that those were predictions that came true. Um, and a large number of people in the space, commentators, um, ourselves, one of those, over an inevitable, we made, we made set of predictions about what was going to happen yeah. um, and when that was going to occur. And this was, and this was one of those. And the... Um, so you actually said these language models were going to be coming out? It was certain. It was certain, right? Absolutely okay, right, certain. Okay. Um, it, was, it was really a case of the ability to aggregate the data set and then the power to train off of it. The, um, the complexity of the processing algorithms, oh my God, this is going to get, this is going to get heavy, <laughs> super I mean, deep. Yeah, it's, I mean, <laughs> most of the listeners are pretty tech savvy, but I don't know how tech savvy, like, I'm tech savvy and I know stuff about AI, but yeah. like, even so, goes over my head. So. It is probably worth, yeah. so the, the things that we do are a little bit different to what other people even in, even data scientists in the mm -hmm. space will, will do. I mean, so do you want to say what you sure, guys do? I mean, so we, we develop artificial intelligence. We specialize in the writing of the machine learning algorithms. Okay. So if you take something like ChatGPT, that data set together, lots and lots of text. The that's That was as their, their linchpin. They obviously made it multimodal, but that was the thing that stretched from one end to the other. That's one component. The other component is some very, very good statisticians that use an algorithm. An algorithm is just a series of instructions that are written in sequence. And the idea is when you put those, the two together, you run the algorithm across the data set and it's looking for correlations. Not causality, correlations, things that occur together. And when you process one, when you process that data set, you end up lining up and uh, lining up the, the, the correlations that you're looking for, and you select the algorithm with, in, with that in mind, hopefully. Okay. Um, so we write those things, the algorithms, and um, the it means that rather than taking a kind of slap against the wall approach that a lot of data scientists will kind of go, well, I've got this data, let's see if that works. Nope, no, how about that one? Nope, how about that one? Nope. Okay. <laughs> we don't do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's so, good to be choosy about your data. Ab absolutely. And it, the, it, it also means that what we do is more ethical because mm -hmm. we only collect, like, we won't collect data, we don't buy data, we don't sell data, but we can still produce the same results. Okay. And that's because the a lot of the time we, we will end up writing, rewriting the algorithm in order to suit the the requirements at hand. Okay. Rather right. than kind of going, okay, we'll just, you know, get, take a company and go just collect everything. Mm -hmm. And the, it's really, so from our perspective, you know, we work with a lot of startups and yeah. they don't have as much data as they need and they go, well, we're just going to collect everything. And we go, no, you don't want to do that. Yeah. You don't, don't want to do that, that for all yeah. sorts of reasons, yeah. hard pass, money swerve. <laughs> You, the, um, and instead you go, well, actually, what, what are you looking to achieve? Mm -hmm. And then we break it down. We go, well, here's the data that you'll need to do that. You need to be upfront about this. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you have buy-in from your audience, that, the, that they know that they're contributing towards, towards something that's going to make their lives better. Okay. Yeah. And that's when they realize, oh, there's, there's actually an ethical approach to this? Holy crap. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> the, the thing is, you should be using AI to make things better. 
Yeah. Isn't that the whole That point? is sort of the point. <laughs> it should, yeah. That I mean, is sort of the mind, point. Anyway, yeah. Um, it, but... You could spend all day just talking mm-hmm. about tech ethics. Yeah. If you, if you wanted to. And the... See the Patreon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Six hour extended cut. Oh, yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's get into it. Because of what we do. And I'm, I'm still, I'm, I think I'm still introducing who we are. I, I think you still are. I think I'm still yeah. working that out, to be yeah. fair. When you have your own startup and you're a founder of your own startup, yeah. sort of, you know, at a certain, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a strength to some forms of ambiguity. And, you know, yeah, you know, totally. To, but to I think when you're introducing yourself to a new concept as well that is just starting to grab traction in the mainstream, mm. so when more people start to hear the word AI in regular yeah. news, it then becomes like, well, how do you differentiate yourself, differentiate yourself from what other AI companies are doing? And it becomes you know, difficult, yeah. 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 Especially because, like, and you know, we started off as a bunch of nerds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Didn't we are. We, 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 yeah, <laughs> of course. Yeah. But like, we, 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 but the the stuff that we were working on, we were like, oh, you know, hopefully, lots of people will get this one mm-hmm. day. And yeah, we we were doing, you know, write, writing these algorithms, doing this this work. Mm-hmm. The world seems to have pivoted into us. That's good. <laughs> Which is nice. It's nice. But it means that it means that I have to have these kinds of conversations where we go, oh no, no, we're, we're not we're not the bad guys. Uh, oh God. Oh no. Oh, I had like such yeah. a, a visceral image in my head then of you just like eating lunch and then the whole world t- turning to realize they want to use AI and you're like, what? That's what it feels. That's yeah. legit what it feels like. Yeah. Um, news is something that I'm, I'm, whether or not we're pre- we are prepared for that, mm-hmm. we kind of have to because. Yeah. Make no in no uncertain terms this statement is an actual battleground happening yeah. right now. Mm-hmm. Got nothing to do with with Skynet, yeah, because <laughs> there's a land grab happening, and the land yes. grab is happening in the courts. Mm-hmm. The land grab is happening in what we define as um, ethical frameworks. Yeah, what we do, um, whether we and and how we distribute. The, the beneficial out, outcomes okay. of of this incredibly powerful system mm-hmm. that was trained off of human endeavor. Who would you say those people are that are participating in the land grab? So, the you can say <laughs> um, so things too hard. <laughs> <laughs> I would invite people to go and to go and find find this part out for mm-hmm. themselves and they become a it becomes immediately available yeah. once you once you start looking at this space from their own perspective mm-hmm. um but so i don't end up getting so that was a noble answer that was, yeah. i wasn't sure if that would be too inflammatory yeah, but, no, yeah. but the but but it is but i i, I want people to become educated mm-hmm. on this. i want people to realize that this is a this this is an important space and it's a space that's even if it's not people don't feel like it's relevant to them now mm-hmm. it absolutely will be relevant to them later oh yeah completely and yeah. the there are some really weird battles that have already been fought and in sometimes won by the good guys yeah for instance uh, a court case that went right up to the supreme court mm-hmm. court yeah and and you like stopped a company from defining ai as an inventor and it was important for the weirdest one of the weirdest reasons okay hit me for two reasons intrinsically it's a very good idea for mm-hmm. at present for an ai to be seen as a tool yes and not a being or yes yeah, okay. because otherwise you start removing liability from mm-hmm. its automated decisions yes which would be horrendous would you say that then takes the liability away from the company that's building it would prim- yeah, which okay. would be really yeah. really bad mm-hmm. or owning it yes not necessarily building it yeah that is sometimes quite important yeah but the the reason why was in the the most mundane the, the most mundane reasons you can imagine mm-hmm. in the action of filling in the form you have to say who was the inventor and legally you have to define that as a naturalized human that lives in an address okay, right according you know like mm-hmm. common law like real yeah, yeah. backbone stuff right and they tried to put an ai in that mm-hmm. place and they went it's not a natural human that's it yeah now okay well yeah. that was but that was really positive because yeah, yeah, yeah. it essentially that that body swerved a massive argument mm-hmm. a massive debate and the problem is that people People go, oh, well, AI is really powerful. It, this tears up the rule book. But no, it doesn't. No. And the majority of the people that want people to think that mm-hmm. 
are the people who have large-scale AI systems and they want to be able to remove liability from all right, sorts of I things, yeah. such as, so oh, you know, you're fired, mm. sorry, AI said so. Yeah, I get it, yeah. So you're skirting rules, basically, you're sidestepping things. It's, the most mm. important part here is it's a tool. That's why, like, I don't see them as a scary thing. Like, even, this is something we've discussed mm -hmm. through the art world, through whether it's you're making music through or anything like that. Yeah. I don't see it, like, any of my team upstairs, a few of them have been worried. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, you know, they can do graphic design. We've got graphic designers, we're not going to need them. Or, you know, and I can understand why the fear is there. But uh, AI has been in Photoshop for a long time to help you content aware fill. Like, like every person, every person who's listening to mm. this or watching this, hi guys, yeah. <laughs> has interacted mm -hmm. with AI already that day, yep. today, mm -hmm. right now. Right now. Um, we're AI, you just don't know it. Predictive search, predictive text. Yep is an AI model. That, need, that needs some tightening, AI auto -correct. Absolutely, but we've been using it for a long <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, we have, yeah, yeah. So AI is defined as the, the ability to enact human-like decision-makings mm -hmm. using a computer. Well, technically, it doesn't even say the words computer. It's just the emulation of human-like decision-making. Yeah. So bring on Magic 8-Ball. Yeah, is you that know, the literal tag, the emulation of human... It, it's... Because if not, that, the, that's a gr this might be what the episode's called, because that's a great tagline. Well, that is... There's a fair few around around about the 80s mm -hmm. where that that started to well, like in the 50s 80? and such. So the the, the definitions have, have mm -hmm. gone back have, have gone back. You know, Turing had one. Mm -hmm. He didn't just have one. He also had a benchmark for it. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. My favourite one was a guy called Larry Tesla. No okay. relation. Oh, okay. Um, who <laughs> he, he in the door, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he defined AI as anything we can't quite do yet. I think that, that that's not wow. a direct translation. Yeah. That, that's not a, a direct quote. Weirdly enough, that's one of the most serviceable definitions yeah. of AI because in terms of the when people say, "Oh, we've got AI," and you go, "Well, you've got not you've not done AI. You've just got a crappy full feed forward neural network." Yeah. Going yeah. There. Well, no, no, they were both AI, and mm -hmm. at the same time, the next thing will also be AI because they've all kind of been AI. In fact, weirdly enough, one mm -hmm. of my big arguments is the, de the the description of AI, the definition of mm -hmm. AI, isn't fit for purpose. Okay. Because in order to define something from a scientific perspective, you need to be able to benchmark it. And that, that definition is too broad to be able to benchmark now. Okay. To be able to, there's no meter stick in that. There's no AI freaking value of AI there. Yeah, and instead, we should probably start defining AI's power and ability mm -hmm. as an ability to emulate certain types of problem sets. Okay. And so how does that classification of the power of the AI work? How would you... Because I know we, we discussed like strong AI. Mm -hmm. What would be... So strong, strong AI is the ability to match human ability yeah. okay. in, in a certain area or, right. or beat it. Mm -hmm. um, Which most so will be able to. For years, we've had strong AI, but very narrow AI for a long yeah. time. Not you know? general AI. Which is what and most gen think yeah, so general AI yeah. is the ability to or well, strong general AI mm -hmm. would be to do everything we can do better to the same level or better. Yeah, yeah. That's um, a, that's usually the term that when people start getting scared they start of talking things, about AI. They start talking AI about, yeah, is what you yeah, think. Yeah, and the we've you know like Gary Kasparov be, being beaten at chess. Mm -hmm. Well, that was arguably that was strong strong AI. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was just a, a you know backtrack algorithm. Mm -hmm. Mapped out every every out, possible Wednesday yeah, and do work backwards. Yeah. Yeah. This is you know, something that mo most people who who uh, they could you could work that out, learn that, and do that yourself in about twenty minutes now. Yeah, because well, that's you know, what a lot of chess people do, don't they? I think it's just the speed that it was done makes it look a lot scarier because AI works hell of a lot faster than we do. There's a a rule that what we perceive as difficult, mm -hmm. the things that AI is really bad at. Are the things that we're really good at For without example. really thinking about them. Yeah. If we were to play chess, mm -hmm. there is there isn't a human player who can reliably beat an AI. If <laughs> didn't beat you, then I was like, fucking hell, he's good at chess. <laughs> <laughs> but any player, yeah. there isn't a human player that can reliably beat, beat an AI at chess. Yeah. But which is and it's now child's play mm -hmm. for an AI. But setting the board and cleaning up afterwards mm. is a really, really okay. pain of a task. It's a real pain of a task. Yeah, yeah. Now, still, however, if you 
if you take the time, it's because it's you've in order to build that you have you have abstracted the task to mm -hmm. the point where it become only the things that are easy for a an algorithm to solve. It's just doing that. Okay. It's totally yeah, abstracted yeah. from reality, and it's no longer doing those parts. When you see when you see robots moving stuff, mm -hmm. it's not. You know that's that's not the the, the clever bit, it, but it is the very hard part. Yeah, yeah. Caring caring for people very very difficult. But yeah. but having said that, bringing this back in, we've seen and by the way, there's a paradox involved okay. in that. But the bring bringing this back to the you know where where stuff is going at the moment. There's research that shows that has shown over the last couple of years AI's ability to learn how to cooperate with itself learn how to collaborate in an adversarial environment. Uh, so With um, other AI? With other AI, training okay, at the same right. time. Um, oh, I didn't even know that was happening. Oh, babe. I, yeah, the... Um, <laughs> Me! <babe. laughs> uh, <laughs> if you want to be scared about that, mm -hmm. also done by OpenAI. Okay, I think that's a good place to reset the timer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll definitely get onto that next. <laughs> yeah. Open so, the, the same people who made ChatGPT, mm -hmm. um, and the the various incarnations of that have one of my favorite little experiments that they, that they mm -hmm. created and it was a um, it's a game of hide and seek yep. that they trained in this is open knowledge go watch the videos or or you know right there yeah I okay am i allowed um, to say i've seen that then yeah we, okay, I just i've seen that yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> in in that video mm -hmm. They create what's known as AI agents. Mm -hmm. So agent meaning the, uh, that it has agency. Not oh, hello, Mr. Anderson. Kind of thing. Yeah. So um, that's that's the definition of agent. Mm -hmm. It's the same definition, weirdly enough. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah the, um, but the the idea is that there's a team, a team on one side, team on the other side, mm -hmm. and they had to learn to cooperate, yep. collaborate, not necessarily communicate, and be able to to be able to solve their task. And they were working, so the blue mm -hmm. team's job was to hide from the red team, and the red team's job was to seek. Yeah. You know, so you had two red, seek. two blue, just to... Yeah. yeah. And over the course of many, many training cycles, they learned, the, they learned how to divide up the tasks mm -hmm. so that they could do, it within the, do, do their actions within the right times, yeah. and to be able to hide and or seek effectively. Mm -hmm. But what ended up happening was um, action and then counteraction in their own kind of arms race as well. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot going on in this. There is. A it lot. was very impressive. Like, yeah. It's very cool <laughs> to see. Like, um, and Especially when he threw so, the ramp out the map. I was like, yeah, so and, and that was the, that was the, the, so they, they, they essentially put them in a game mm -hmm. that they built. Yeah. And they, a game with its own physics engine and, you know, some like doorways that the, what the blue team had to kind of block up and the red yeah. team had to use other objects to try and get in. Was the, it Unity? Ooh, I'll have to check. It, it looked like Unity. That's why I just, yeah. I yeah. Regardless, yeah. it's just yeah. It's, so the, yeah. Um, I, I more look at like the LSTM kind of long short term memory algorithm parts yeah, yeah, of that. Yeah. I wouldn't be yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if, mm -hmm. if the physics engine was not was not something that they built. And that's a really important point because yeah. they built this engine and they went, okay, guys, learn. And first thing they did was, you know, eventually, you know, the, the, the blue team got the little boxes, blocked up the doorways. Mm -hmm. Great, no problem. And then, and then the red team went, ah ha ramp. You know, even though they've locked up the doorway, yeah. use the ramp, get over it, no problem. And then more complex behaviors. You know, the second the blue team started hiding the ramp as well, yeah. in reaction to that, and then they had to make the game harder. Mm -hmm. The blue team won every time because they had a head start on that. They couldn't yeah. reduce it, so instead they had to build their own shelter. And that's where the fun stuff started to happen because mm -hmm. yeah. the what started to emerge because of the ran the way that the kind of a, a generative component within that tries random actions mm -hmm. That's what and I was then gonna say, sees like, what, what, what makes it want to try those specific things. Okay, it just so whatever's there. <laughs> well, so it's it's the power of nerd time R and G. Okay. Um, <laughs> the put in the term way that marketing works. Mm -hmm. Like digital marketing has that lovely little feedback loop in it. Mm -hmm. Weirdly enough, there's a good analogy there. Okay. You try a whole bunch of stuff, a bunch of keywords, bunch of bunch of this, bunch of that. Some of those will have an, the right effect. Some of those won't have the right effect. You choose just you, you get rid of the ones that don't have the right effect, okay. that don't resonate with the right audience, 
And then you take that, you broaden it out. So he's talking to me because I know he's a work in digital marketing now. Like that. <laughs> it, it, it makes yeah. sense. Yeah, and, then, and, then, and that's cool. That part there, that was a generation. Yeah. In algorithmic terms, it's called an epoch. And then you, it's really and then you go, and then it goes again. The only yeah. difference is in a, in something like a genetic algorithm, you which is essentially emulate a very poor emulation of the evolutionary process. So that's why you call it a genetic algorithm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. And so that that part of that models that same behavior. Each one of those would have been the, the most successful ones get bred. It's yeah. very much like that, and mm -hmm. they have a whole bunch of children, each one of those with, with specific differences because of the, that, uh, that random component. Yeah. And the most successful ones of, a, of those mm -hmm. uh, go on again and again yeah. and proliferate. Mm -hmm. And however, because of that, a certain, that's where the, um, there's a goal and an intention, but there's a random, the, the random component allowed for counter strategies to emerge Okay. Which were which were then identified as successful. Right. Okay. So you've got to have something where you measure what success is, and in mm -hmm. this case, it's the red team, the blue team hiding successfully, or the red team managing to discover yeah. them. And that that's what creates that feedback loop in the same way as resonant messaging and marketing yeah. do mm -hmm. the, jo the job. Mm -hmm. The no, not all marketing is AI. Just so we're clear <laughs> yeah. on that, that was just an analogy. Yeah. <laughs> um, context. <laughs> I keep um, defining. Yeah. Put a disclaimer at the bottom. Like that, yeah, 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 yeah. But because of that random component, they started to discover exploits within the gaming physics. So yeah. the blue team discovered methods of getting rid of the ramp out of the entire game mm -hmm. and just flicking it off into the corner. Yeah. Or the red team paying themselves. And the important part there is because it's a because it's a program that's executing that, it could do that reliably mm -hmm. in a way that like the, only the most skilled Speed person runners. would ever <laughs> yeah, be able like, to do that. Like sequence breaking. Yeah, absolutely. And you know the, and that's a really, really good lesson. Mm -hmm. And it should be taken as a really good lesson. That box, the boxes, the literal boxes that were being created for that, had borders, had boundaries, had rules. Yeah. Don't you know? You can't surf. You can't. You can't do the essentially wave dashing. Mm -hmm. AI found a way. Yes, and that was something like, I'm glad we want to lead on to this, because this is something we spoke about, about if you put something in a box, it's probably going to get out of the box. Yes. So let's define that for listeners then. Why would an AI get out of the box? And is that down to the human error of setting the boundaries of the box? Or is that just an inherent quality of AI to just always want to be out of the box that you make it in? Let me assure you on one one thing. Mm -hmm. Most things, mm -hmm. most services that you use on a daily basis, mm -hmm. most things that have been coded were put together by people who were stressed, <laughs> imperfect yep. beings yeah. who, were under the, who, who needed to get it working and then kind of put a mental note, I'll, I'll just get back to that. Yeah. I if really it's thought working, you were going to give the HAL 9000 quote there. Sure. Like, now you've said it, we're down to human error. <laughs> well, and essentially, yes, yeah. that's that's it. There is no... Um, Amy, add that in, please. Thank you. Yeah. The, <laughs> which means that the tasks that are inside the digital realm, yeah. there's a paradox to this. The things that are good, that, that humans are good at, computers are bad at, and we don't really... Mm -hmm. We see something that's very, very impressive when, um, when ChatGPT will do something. Yeah. We don't realize that if you take one, one step contextually to the side, it can't do that. Mm -hmm. And it's merely emulating something within its sort of strong but narrow form of AI. Okay. However, inside the digital realm, we will not have supremacy at all, which means that we'll be putting it in a box where we are under-equipped. And this is... Okay, we're starting to get into the realm of fantasy here, but that's a prediction mm -hmm. that is not worth... It doesn't, you know, regardless of when that happens, we will be putting strong... You know, if somebody goes, oh, well, this is, this is strong general artificial intelligence. Hooray, I've done this. I'm just going to keep it to myself and yeah. you know, use, it, use yeah. it to make money just like everyone else would. No, no, no. Do not do that. Um, because you'd be putting it in a... For one reason, you'd be putting it in a box where you are less capable of keeping it there than it is of breaking out. And there is no reason for it to stay in that container. There is every reason for it to, for it to be out. To be out. Yeah. My co-founder and I, we sometimes joke, which is people will know when strong artificial intelligence 
strong general artificial intelligence exists, particularly if we build it, because we'll just we'll just turn up dead. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's the, um, okay, that's that is a joke. Yeah. Um, probably. Don't um, joke. Yeah. We'll find out. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. Um, the. Because the simplest thing what would happen, and, and this is a weird this is the weird thing about how these jumps in technology actually happen. Large enterprise are very, very bad at innovating. Yes. At creating things of meaningful large scale value. It's it's quite rare. When they do it, they they kinda smash it. But mm -hmm. we're talking like kind of bordering once a generation. Yeah, there's very, very the big uh, things, isn't it? You know, yeah. it's like well, the, it, there's too much yeah. risk. Yeah. 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 as well yeah. so um and they're very bureaucratic very slow moving so instead they kind of sit back and they let they let startups build stuff they're just kind of bad startup yeah it's a way better way to do that mm -hmm. theoretically speaking there is a an equation which you know which you would call an algorithm which you could write tomorrow which when given access to the right data set would be able to self-evolve Okay. And create a strong general artificial intelligence. And that is weirdly more likely, mostly because of just the sheer volume of numbers, yeah. it's weirdly more likely to happen between a very small team that no one's ever heard of. So you, t you told me that <laughs> if you were to create your own strong AI, one of the first oh, things God. you would do is... <laughs> no, you said this! <laughs> would make it kill others in the cradle, or at least... Sabotage, not kill. So not personifying a program. Sabotage other AI in the cradle before they develop. Okay, so, my God, that's jumping out of mm. context here, but thank you for no, that. No. No, just because so, it's in the... I don't want to forget the, So to this is this. an important... Yeah, it, yeah. It's, there's, there's some important stuff to, to, mm -hmm. to go through on yeah. that one. We forget, we're forgetting, you know, like recent news of open, open AI buying, you yeah. know, bu buying or investing in companies in this last week, uh, you know, bipedal robots to, you know, uh, yeah. and stuff like that. But I didn't know the, about that, but that's... Yes, well, it's okay. so that there is, there's so much. Okay. Um, and on a daily basis, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm reading papers. I'm also now reading news as well. That's the difference yeah. in my job now. Um, <laughs> you have to read the news. Guys. Yeah, I, I know, right? Yeah. yeah. At the moment, the, the battleground that's happening mm -hmm. involves what's, who, what is the inventor? Who is the creator? Who created the data set? Who has ownership rights over, the, over that data? And weirdly enough, the thing that really concerns me is that's not actually, that shouldn't be a debate because yeah. all of those things have already been defined. Okay. However, because policymakers don't necessarily understand the technology, they might think that Rather than thinking about it as a tool, they go, oh, my, holy crap, this is sentient, therefore the company has mm -hmm. no rights or responsibilities over something like this. Yeah. That's where stuff starts getting really scary. Yeah. That's when the um, when people start overstretching. And in the same way mm -hmm. as people go, hey, let's build a really big boat and, you know, and <laughs> not necessarily build some right life as many life rafts yeah, as people. Because yeah. it'd be fine. It'd be yeah, fine. I mean, that didn't happen. No, absolutely. No, no. <laughs> no. And, overlay boat side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and sometimes, so some of the work that we do involves finding some big ass icebergs and yeah. going, hey guys, let's do some steering at the very yeah. least. Or possibly, yeah. if we're lucky enough, go, yeah, you want some more life raft. And that's that's kind of some of the tech for good stuff that, mm -hmm. that we do trying to talk to policymakers and making it um, cut through the noise. Yeah. And in, in particular, kind of. It's very much a David and Goliath fight because you can think of the scale yeah. of the companies mm -hmm. that are in the on the other side of this, trying to kind of go, oh, yeah. no, no, it, it's 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 fine, it's fine. We'll just we'll just synthesize your data, synthetic data. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be, um, yeah. So it's not necessarily talked about a lot right now. Mm -hmm. It will be. It will be. Yeah. It will be. Mm -hmm. Um, and what 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 do you mean by synthesized data? Just so people, yeah, sure. Because no I, I know that someone will have heard that and be like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah. So one of the important points to distinguish between synthetic data and generated data. Mm -hmm. Generated data was that that game that game board, the you know those those, those little guys running around inside it. All yeah. of that was generated data. That it has no interaction or no inference from the organic world okay. whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's exclusively, now it's still valid, but it's not, but that is, has been generated. Okay. Synthetic data happens where you take actual people's data. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and remember, AI or machine learning is just really good automated statistics. 
yeah. that then get, becomes turned into a model, same meaning of the word model, statistical mm-hmm. model, AI model, and then you run that in the real world. Now, instead, you get halfway into that. When you, wait, when you make synthetic data, you get halfway into that process and you, do, you, um, you find all of those correlations and you put them in a big ball. And then you go, okay, what data would also have created this model? And you run it backwards. And okay. you create another data set that's From not the data set right. of actual people's data. Okay, so it's almost like... Yeah, I get what you mean. Okay, right. Okay, yeah. so sounds like it's not a bad idea. Mm. Um, it's an amalgamation of... Yeah, with, so... Well, is that data safe and the original data? Because it's not exactly the same. So it's many inferred. people will argue that it is. Mm-hmm. Saner minds would argue that it is not. Okay. So there's a couple of problems with that. Say no minds being you. Sure. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I do not claim to be saying. I like to get definitions. Um, yeah. The, um, now, the, the, the problem is, let's say that you're, you're, you're taking personal demographic information. Mm-hmm. You're going, well, you know, blackish jumper, blackish jumper, mm-hmm. connected to microphone, connected to microphone, yep. you know, got brown hair, got brown hair. Okay, that's important. And you count all of that stuff up. And that's, a, I mean, this is a very simplification, but that is still statistics like we all learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the difference is the better, the more powerful algorithms will count not just that, but the, the connections between that. So mm-hmm. when people have X and Y, they also have Z and they'll connect those, that, that, that together. Yeah. Now, if you do that perfectly and you get every aspect of correlations, you end up creating a perfect model of okay. that data. Right, which is mathematically possible, but it would be huge. And um, here's the issue: if you then were to run that backwards, and you get mm. the same data out, same number of people in, same data out, yeah. that data will be the same data. Yeah, yeah. If you do it perfectly, mm-hmm. if you don't do it perfectly, that whatever level you've stopped at, yeah, you've lost forever. Mm-hmm. So and is that data quality is important? Yes. Yeah. How you capture the data is important to make sure that you're not building accidentally racist judges. So you're yeah, not yeah. you you are able to contextualize it. You're able to understand mm-hmm. the biases that are contained within that database. So you're able to create something. Yeah. Because yeah, create cause something that actually okay. can out ethic. So, yeah. Because if you do, if you get it right, you can create. Um, that's a different example, but I'll, I'll come to that later. If you take said perfect model when you run mm-hmm. that backwards you get you would get the same data out yeah theoretically if you don't you've wiped away potentially very very important information forever you end up in this weird loop mm-hmm. this, and it's relatively paradoxical because what ends up happening is so number one one of the ways that they'll do this is they'll they'll change the size of that data set okay now data being the new oil you end up you know, you're gonna you're gonna increase that. Yeah. You know, you're not gonna decrease it. <laughs> no. You increase it. Let, let's triple it, double it. Mm-hmm. When you're done with that, let's be safe. You know, you, you've used it for your purposes. Oh, we can now we can sell it. It's per, it's, it's not their data. No problem. Mm-hmm. We can do that. So they will. You know, that's what they do. They will they will sell that to two other companies. Mm-hmm. Who will themselves? <laughs> oh, yeah. so so par- parties that would do this. And if you don't think this is relevant, it sort of is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> They'll sell that will be sold to two other, say, two other companies. Mm-hmm. They will use that for their own purposes, and then they will sell it on again, onwards again. Okay. To one third company who has no idea that what they've just done isn't. They may have thought that those were different data sources. Okay. When they pull that back together, anything that allows that company to know that that had an organic origin originally. Yeah makes it weaker and more likely for you to be able to identify those original people, okay. which would be very bad. So is that going to new levels of encryption of the data then to make sure that that's safe, like when we were discussing but they, but in So you could leave it in an encrypted state, but then mm-hmm. what's the point in synthesizing the data in the first place? Yeah, if you've got it encrypted. Yeah. yeah. That's, so okay. the only reason to do so is so that you yeah. can sell data and you mm-hmm. don't need to sell data there's all sorts of better ways to do that. It's only okay. because the only reason why this is ever done, why anybody actually wants to do yeah. this, and as we just said, mm-hmm. the second you, you the second you actually start doing this process, the chances are you're gonna you're gonna ruin the data. Okay. 
And then it's going to go out into, out into the free world. And there's no real way to prove that that data was real people. Right, okay. And then when they put that, those two companies, yeah. sell it to that one company and puts it back together, and if there was any bias it. in that, they've just doubled it. Fuck, okay, right, yeah. And they can't work it out <laughs> yeah, backwards. Yeah. And anything that solves any one of those three problems mm -hmm. opens up the other two problems. It's a paradox. Yeah. The reason why that's important mm -hmm. is... Right now, the Financial Conduct Authority is currently humming and harring about making that a tradable standard in the UK to allow financial entities to sell the data of the people that right. they, they, they're... They're, um, they're making it allowable. Or... They are thinking about making it allowable. Well, presumably people are telling them about said paradox though, right? Oh, that inevitably identified this. Oh, cool. Uh, Thanks. Oh, <laughs> well, um, I was trying to take that into account. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and so the... We are. Yes. And then we were silenced. As you can see, the episode ends abruptly there as someone turned up and told us to stop talking about the things we were talking about. We're going to pretend you were big data. The man came. Yeah, the man came. Mysterious, right? <laughs> anyway, hope you enjoy part two. That will be out very, very soon. And we'll see you next week. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review. Please subscribe and like on YouTube if that's where you're watching. Let us know what you thought below in the comments. And uh, yeah, we'll probably see some clips on TikTok, won't we? Because we like to be unsafe with our data. Goodbye. <laughs>